to praise our God. Why don't you stand to your feet? Who's excited to be in church this morning? Who's ready to praise our God? Come on, what do we give Him a praise? Why don't you put your hands up? Come on, sing with me.
sing it out, Jeff. Go my That's it. You declare. don't know your name, you call us by ours, you know everything about us, oh God, and still you love us, oh God. I just want to encourage you, church, we say it week in, week out, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, we have a God that loves us, that is championing, championing you through everything that you're doing, and whether you've seen success whether you're still waiting for it, you just know that His promise stands, that what He speaks over your life doesn't change the next day. It's all the same. He's waiting for you where you're at. With that thought, let's worship Him because He's a good God. Let's give all the thanks where thanks is due. Let's, Let's put Him on His rightful throne in our hearts. Let's push everything else aside. This is the time between us and God where we get to make right, where He gets to rain down, where He gets to come down and meet you where you're at. This is the time for that. So why don't you, lay, why don't you lay, raise your hands? Let's worship this place. Come on, let's sing. Lady. 
Waiting for a change to come Knowing the battle You have never failed me yet. His promise still stands in His promise. Your promise still stands. Come on, declare it. Praise your faithfulness. Faithfulness. Come on, sing it out. There's no name like the name of Jesus. No name like the name of Jesus. Man, I, I, I love that song. Who loves that song? 
I love that song, church. You know, where, where His promises, I, I love it where it talks about that, His promises, His promises, they, they stand forever. His promises stand forever. Uh, you know, you, you may have a number of things that are crumbling in your world. You may feel like things are falling literally beneath you at the moment, but His promises still stand, church. His promises still stand. You, you may feel like you got no options. You got options. You got the promises of God. You don't need anything else when you got the promises of God. Hold on to the promises of God. We got a book full of options. It's called the Word of God. Don't feel you're at the end because that's where, when you feel you're at the end, that's when He just gets going. That's when He just gets going. Hold on to the promises of God. They are true, church. They are true. There, there, there is the miraculous in the, in the promises of God. Hey, I got, I got some. Who, who's just enjoying the time in worship this morning? It's just cool. It's so good, isn't it? There's nothing else like being in the presence of God. I got, I got some, some prayer, prayer requests this morning. I've also got a praise point. I got someone that's just celebrating because they've been believing for a job for a month, and God has provided a job, which is really cool. Don't give up. I'm not sure what you're believing for at the moment. Keep praying. Understand that your God loves you. He is for you. But I've also got some prayer requests this morning. Uh, I've got some requests for healing. I've got requests for a home. I've got, we've got some stuff going on here where we need to see God step in. So church, as a group of believers, what we just believe together to see these things turn around, to see these things come to pass. Maybe you've got something going on in your life at the moment. Why don't you raise your hand this morning and I'm going to pray for you as well. We're going to believe together that whatever is, is, has, is coming against you, I tell you what, it will not stand because of the promises of God. Whatever you need to see breakthrough in, start to believe. Start to stir your faith up this morning. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in this year of the year of ask. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, for the, the way that you are answering prayer, that you are bringing the miraculous into our world. But, Father, we also come before you with some asks this morning. Father, we pray for healing over this, over this person. Father, we, we pray for our home. Lord, for, the, for, for this other group of people, Lord, what, whatever is needed in this place, Lord, what, what people are asking for, Father, I, I declare it, Lord, because of your promises, Father, Lord, because of your promises, you hear us and you're going to deliver because you're our God, you're our Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are the Jehovah Jireh, you are the provider. This morning, we acknowledge your power. Lord, we acknowledge your love and we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. But I commit every need to you this morning, every desire to you this morning. And we declare it, and we declare it, Lord, that you will see it come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Oh, how good is that? That is so good. Ah, oh, you beautiful church. You are beautiful. Why don't you say to the person next to you, you are beautiful. Tell them they look beautiful this morning. Thank you, Andres. You're beautiful too, bro. I love this church. It's a beautiful church. How are the people of God this morning? Are you well? It's so good to have you in church. It's so good to see you this morning. Well, we're going to just take a couple of moments to welcome some very special people who are our guests. We love our guests that enjoy church, don't we? Come on, why don't we give them a round of applause? We're about to make a big deal out of our guests. We absolutely love our guests. And if you're a guest with us this morning, we would really love to get to meet you a little more. And uh, what we've done, also what we would love for, to do would be to actually get you to meet some of our pastors and leaders. And we've actually got a guest lounge specifically designed for you. That's through the auditorium doors in the foyer. And over there, we serve the best hot beverages in Melbourne. Let me tell you, the best, the best. And so if you're a guest here this morning, we want you to join us back over there after the service. The Bible says this, church, because for us, we want to see you flourish. We, want, we, we, we really do want to see you flourish. And the Bible says that those that are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. And, 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 and at Enjoy Church, we've made this really easy through our ABCs. Just through regularly attending church, through committing and belonging to a friendship group, and by using and contributing your gifts and abilities, you will truly flourish because you're planted in the house. Amen. That's what we want to see happen. Not only that, we have prepared a welcome pack for you, which is going to help you flourish. In this welcome pack, we have vital information about Enjoy Church. And we also have a very special message 
from our incredible senior pastors. There's a, there's a, there's a link to a message from our, our senior pastors, Pastor Shane and Georgie Baxter, with a very, very special welcome. And so if you're a guest with us today, would you do us the honour of just allowing us to welcome you by, by placing your hand straight up so that one of our hosts can place one of these welcome packs in your hand. That is awesome. Look at that. So good. Come on, church. Let's keep clapping in this morning. So good to have you enjoy church. Wow, look at this. We've got guests everywhere. Come on, just keep your hand up. One of our hosts, one of our hosts will put a welcome pack in your hand. So good to have you and enjoy church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, let me just talk about something else. Uh, I want to talk to you about your next steps. Maybe you've been at Enjoy Church for a short amount of time. Uh, maybe you've been here for some time, but you haven't taken that next step into getting connected into, into the family at Enjoy Church. Well, we have devised a brand new initiative to help you do that. It's called Grow Track. All right. Now, Grow Track is just a very simple two week course that runs every week. Okay. Uh, in the second service. So session one, we'll talk about who we are as a church. It'll talk about our journey, which is a very, very cool journey. In session two, it's going to talk about who you are, how you've been wired, you know, what's inside of you. And so uh, during the second service, during this service, you can actually go out through church news and you can be part of Grow Track. Just walk through the doors, out into MP1, and one of our team will be there to meet you so you can do Grow Track. So whether you've been in the church for a short amount of time, Maybe you've been in the church for some time and you have not really taken those next steps. Today is your day. Today is your day. So why don't you go out during church news and experience these next steps. Is that okay? Start the journey. Just begin the journey. And so I want to encourage you because we would love to see you there. Uh, on the seats in front of you would be our care and communication forms. Okay, you can probably see them there. Many of you will have filled them out last week. Now, I understand that that for some of you, you've been here for a short amount of time. And the truth is that we probably don't have your details. So we really want your details so that we can just pastorally care for you, so that we can communicate with you on a regular basis. And so uh, if, if you've got a form there in front of you and, and you haven't filled it out, please fill it out. Uh, if you need a pen, put your hand up and one of our hosts will bring you a pen. But we, we really would ask you that you would fill out these details just so that we can stay connected with you. Now, just so you know, uh, we don't give any of these details out. We just keep them to ourselves. They're, they're held in a private place, so your details will be secure. But if you need a pen, put up, your hand, put up your hand, and one of our hosts will bring that to you this morning. That is so good. Thank you so much just for your cooperation. Is that okay? Is that cool? I, I want to move into a time of giving. Is that okay? I just want to encourage you in your giving this morning. Is that okay? So God has really been encouraging me in my giving with this scripture. I've been giving for over 30 years. But who knows, at time, it's like, man, sometimes we can lose the significance of giving. Sometimes we, 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 you know, we can just do it as an obligation. We can do it as a course of habit. But I would believe that God wants to encourage us in our giving, that God would want us to understand how crucial our giving is. Are you okay, church? Is that good? All right, let me, let me go to Acts chapter 2 beginning at verse 44. And it says this, and it said that all the believers met together in one place and shared everything that they had. They sold their property and their possessions and they shared their money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day and they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the time praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, say each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Now that, that's a cool scripture, isn't it? I love it. Can, can you see, church, what is going on in this scripture? Can you see what is going on as a result of the faithful giving of the people? Can you see what's happening here? I mean, they weren't just sharing meals. I mean, that was awesome. But, but you, can you see what was going on? Save lives were happening because of the giving and the faithfulness of these people. Church, never, never underestimate the power of your giving. I mean, there is a prize for faithful giving and it's increased believers. Do, do you realise that, that your giving is powerful? I mean, church, w when you give, never be in doubt that you are actually working directly with God 
to bring out the saving of lives. Never be in doubt, church, that when you give, that you are working directly with God to bring, an, to bring restoration of lives, to bring increased believers into the house of God. See, on the other side of your giving, on the other side of your generosity and your sacrifice is added believers. Do you realize that? Do you understand that? Your, your giving is so powerful. Church, I don't know how it works. All I know is that, is that it does work. And I know, I know myself that I am here. I've been restored. I've been saved. I know that you are here. You have been restored. You have been saved because, because people before us sacrificially gave. People before us generously gave. And we are here because those people work with God. They worked in cooperation with God. And as a result, our lives got saved. Well, church, I think as a church, we have a responsibility because we can see other, other lives get saved, can't we? Because of your giving, because of your faithfulness. Now, I don't get how it works, but I think when we put, we put our, our giving in God's hands, it's powerful. And the Bible tells us that. So church, why don't we pray? Father, I thank you. I thank you for this incredible group of people, faithful people. Lord, help us never to grow weary, Lord, in our giving. Lord, help us to understand that on the other side of our giving, there is a prize, and that is in the form of added believers, of saved lives, of restored lives, of futures waiting, waiting to be stepped into. So, Father, we, we give you all the praise, Lord, that you allow us to be able to cooperate and work with you in partnership. Father, we give you all that praise, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. Hey. While our wonderful hosts take up the offering this morning, why don't you turn your attention to Enjoy News? Hey there, Enjoy Church. We have Pastor Roger and Tina Archer with us this coming weekend for our Marriage and Relationship Seminar. I am so excited. I so want to encourage you to be here. That's right. We want to encourage you all to be there. Uh, all our married couples, can you make the investment into your marriage? Yeah. Make sure you come along. If you're engaged, make sure you come along. And if you're even a, even a single person, all you single people, come along. Why would I say that? Because we want to know that you are prepared for when that Mr. or Mrs. Significant comes along and you come together to enjoy the blessing and the goodness of marriage. So here's the deal. I just want to encourage you all, get yourself registered. It is next Saturday. Yeah. Starts at 9.30 a.m., four and a half hours. I tell you the truth, invest into your marriage. Invest into your relationships. It will do you good. And we're going to have a great, great time. No doubt about that. Hey, enjoy church. We are on we are on a roll at the moment. You know, summit was absolutely amazing. It was exciting. It's like we've been to the top of the summit. Now we're skiing all the way down the other side. And I feel like there's a Holy Ghost avalanche chasing us down. And we are in the most uh, amazing times. And God is doing what only God can do. In fact, I'd encourage you, if you're on social media, be watching tomorrow because we have got a very, very special announcement coming your way. But this is what I also want to say. I am praying and we are believing together that what is on the house as we come into the year of us what is on the house is going to come upon you and your family you know we've talked about this before but I just want to say it again if you are planted in the house if you're an enjoyer how many of you know are there any enjoyers in the house just out of yeah that's right where are the enjoyers give us a wave if you're an enjoyer all right to all of you guys now you know as well as I do uh, coming to enjoy church by itself does not make you an enjoyer uh, being an enjoyer is someone who is planted in the house. All right, that's why. All right, this is my house. This is my family. I'm planted here. I'm in church uh, as much as I possibly can be here, week in, week out. I'm in regular fellowship. Uh, I'm in a friendship group, and I'm contributing through my tithes and offerings, and also using my my gifts that the body of Christ might be built up. Here's the thing: if you are an enjoyer, all right. So you know what I'm saying. You're planted doing the ABCs. We are praying and we are believing that what is on us is going to come upon you. So in your asking, can I encourage you, ask for the impossible, ask for the miraculous, ask for, for those things that seem so far beyond your the possibilities of, of normality or, or the realm of possibility. Just ask for whatever is in your heart that, 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 that you are believing that God is for. Because I, I just believe that this is the year that God is not only going to do it for Enjoy Church. Like I said, you watch social media tomorrow, uh, there's going to be an announcement made. Uh, we are so pumped about this. But if, and if God can do this in our lives as a church, 
What is God wanting to do in your life? What is God wanting to do in your family? What is God wanting to do in your business? What is God wanting to do in you and yours? Because I believe He's wanting to do the impossible. So enjoy it. God bless you today. Have a great day in church. I encourage you, cheer on whoever's going to bring the Word of God. Get behind them. Open, open up your hearts. Lean in. Receive the Word of God. I believe it's going to do you good today. God bless you lots. We love you. Yep. We appreciate you. We're thankful for you. And uh, let's get ready for the year. Uh, just a year of the miraculous. This is what I think, Georgia girl. I think the miraculous follows our ask. Yeah. Sometimes absolutely. God's just saying, just ask me. I want to release the miraculous. Just ask me. I'm believing it for you. We're, we're going to enjoy the year of the miraculous because it is the year of the ask. God bless you lots and we'll see you real, real soon. Hey everyone, welcome to Enjoy News. My name's Jess and let's see what's happening in the life of our church. Are you single, in a relationship or married? Well, have we got the thing for you. On the 10th of March at 9.30 a.m. with Pastor Roger and Tina Archer, we have our Marriage and Relationship Seminar. So make sure you register today. And the very next day, we're going to have Pastor Roger Archer at our North and West locations and Pastor Tina Archer at our East locations. So make sure you're there. It's going to be amazing. It's a good, good Friday. You need to come. Yeah, y'all actually need to come. It's on the 30th of March, so invite all your friends along. What comes after a good, good Friday? A celebration Sunday. On the 1st of April, we have our Easter service at all locations and at all service times. So bring everyone you know, because it's going to be awesome. Come and celebrate Easter with us on Good Friday at Fed Square at 1 p.m. For more info, check out celebrateeaster.com.au. Hey there, man. We've got Covenant Keepers on this Thursday night, and it is a night that you do not want to miss. i got to tell you, I'm super excited, and the reason I'm excited is because this is the only time that we're going to be meeting as a whole across all of our campuses uh, between now and August, which is our Covenant Keepers Men's Conference. But i got to tell you, there's a whole lot of other stuff going to be happening in your locations, and you want to be there this Thursday night to find out what's going on. So I want to encourage you, make sure you get yourself booked in. Uh, it's going to cost $10 for food, drink, and everything else that you're going to require on the night. And so come along, have a feed, have a drink, get to know some blokes, and uh, we are in for an incredible time. I want to encourage you, be there. If you're a covenant keeper, man of God, I want to encourage you, come out. It's going to be awesome. See you there. Do you have a heart? Do you have a soul? Well, come to our Heart and Soul at 7 p.m. on the 15th of March across all locations. If you're looking for more info, check out our website and our social media. That's it for Enjoy News. If you're a guest with us today, we'd love to come and meet you after the service in your very own guest areas. Now remember, here at Enjoy Church, say it with me, no one stands alone. I'm Jess and I'll see you later. Come on, church, why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to continue our worship this morning. Who's had a great morning in church so far? Yeah, who is ready for more? Who is ready for God to move in this house like never before? Who is hungry? Who is expected? Come on! Church's presence is here in this place. And in this atmosphere of faith, if there is a need in your life, there is an error in your life that you would like prayer for, then right now I want to invite you to come to the front. What about pastors and leaders? They're going to pray with you, they're going to stand with you, and they're going to believe with you. So if you have an ask in your heart this morning, why don't you step out in faith? And all over this place, we're just going to lift our hands. Come on, we're just going to lift our hands all over this place. And church, I want to encourage you. There are a lot of things in this world. There are a lot of voices in this world that will try and take your attention. But right now, in this moment, set your heart on Jesus. Incline your ear to His voice. What is Jesus saying? What is God saying to you? To that mountain you are facing, to that situation you're looking at, what is God saying? Because Jesus, God, He speaks life. He speaks vision. He speaks purpose.
Sometimes when I listen, I'm listening for what, what for what I want to hear. God is speaking, and I'm, <laughs> I'm hearing something else. It's a bit like when Georgie talks to me. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's like she's saying, "Have I taken the rubbish out?" I'm thinking she's saying she's about to bring me dinner. <laughs> sort of gets lost in translation somewhere. The wife is speaking. I'm listening. I'm ready. But we're not on the same page. I think sometimes in the presence of God, we're saying, come Lord, speak now. I'm, I'm ready, I'm listening. But we've actually already predetermined what it is that God is wanting to speak to us. And we've already worked out the next steps. But what if God was to interrupt and interject and actually step into our worlds and say, this is what I want to speak to you. This is what I've got for you. This is what I'm wanting for you. How, how many of us would be like, I'm ready. I'm listening and I'm ready. How many of us at that point in time would try and push the Lord away just a little bit or maybe step back a little bit? Huh. We're going to have a fun service today. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise if we're ready to have a fun service today. I want to invite Phil and Alex. Is Alex here somewhere? Is Alex here? Come on up, Alex. Let's go to Alex as she comes. All right, your time has come. So the rumour is, no tears. The rumour is that they were singing this song together as a duet, looking into each other's eyes, saying, come Lord, we're ready. Speak now, we're listening. And on Tuesday now, they're going to hop on a plane and fly to Japan. And yeah, let's give up for it. So I want to welcome Japan into the meeting right now. Praise God. I know Rio and Emily and Dan and Trish and their children and some others are watching today. So why don't we just welcome Japan into the service. And uh, 
I'm going to tell you, I'm super excited. So how long have you been living at the Baxter House? About a month. Yeah, a bit, a bit more. Two months. Yeah, it's a bit like living with the Adams family, coming to live with us. And uh, da, 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 da. anyway, moving right along. It's, uh, it's been a great joy to have you in our house for a short period of time. And I didn't think today was going to get here so quickly, if I can be really honest. There's part of me that's getting tired of sending people I love away. It's, uh, you know, Dan and Trish and Rio and Em and Martin and Rose and now you guys. And, and so, well, the good thing is, if you're not in our life, someone else can come in. Or whatever. But you'll be in our lives. We honour you this day. And we celebrate you this day. We're going to pray for you now. And I know the guys in Japan are praying now as well. And uh, we're going to pray. We're going to believe that this next year or so, whatever it is, is going to be the most exciting time of your life. This one thing I can promise you, there is nothing, nothing on earth like following the obedience of God, being walking in obediently, following the lead of God. There's nothing, there's nothing that can compare to it. People do all sorts of crazy things in their lives trying to find the experience that you're about to do as you step into God's purpose for your life for this season. And so I want you to know that we celebrate you. It's going to be stretching for you. You know, Phil gets up here and he, he leads incredible worship up here. But now you're going to be going to the streets of Osaka and doing it on a street corner. Praise God. And Alex will be your roadie. Literally play drums. Literally. As in, so how do you plan a church in Japan? You've got to go to the streets. Because if you just set up your tent and say, hey, this is church, they have no concept of church or Jesus. They're going to walk straight past you and go down to the local Yamaha motorcycle shop or whatever. Why don't you stretch out your hands? We're going to pray for them today. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this incredible couple, son and a daughter of the house. Lord, we lay hands on them this day, and as they go, they go with the blessing of the house. They go with their father and mother, spiritual blessing, spiritual father, spiritual mother. We bless them this day. We bless them every day. Lord, we will pray for them. They will pray for us. I pray, Lord God, that you would keep them safe. I pray, Lord, they would grow in your ways. They'd grow in understanding. They'd grow in wisdom and in maturity. I pray, Almighty God, that as they, as they walk for you, as they run for you, I pray that they would realize things about you that they did not know. I pray that they would realize things about themselves they did not know. I pray that they would grow in, Lord, a knowledge of who they are and what they have. And I pray that they would discover all the gifts that you have already put deep down with inside them. So, Lord, this day and every day, we speak blessing and we speak favor. We pray a safe trip to Japan, to Osaka. We pray, Lord God, as they hit the streets and they begin to invite people, Lord, Japan would open up to them and their hearts would open to Japan. Lord, we give you praise and we thank you, Lord, for a, a young man and a young woman that will follow your lead and follow your purpose all the way, Lord, to another nation. So this day we thank you for them and we send them with blessing in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Let's give it up for these guys, shall we? All right. How many of you are ready for the Word? Everyone say, Word. All right, you ready for the Word? What do you reckon you guys stand up today? And I might take a stool up here. We'll do it differently. Is that okay? All right, you can stand. No, not really. Praise God. Have you high-fived each other? Turn around and find 15 people. Give them a big high favor. We're going to come around the Word of God. Thank you, singers, musos. Look at the worship team today. Look at the choir. Let's go, choir. Let's go. Praise God. I am ready for the word of the Lord. Praise God. I want to say welcome. Let's welcome all of, our, uh, all of our locations into the service today. Can we give it up for them and also everybody else watching online from Osaka and other places? How many of you would like to know a secret? All right. I'll tell you the truth. If you go to Instagram in the morning, you will see the secret. How many of you that's really naughty? You were like, oh, tell us. I can't tell you. No, I can't tell you. But it's coming. Go to Instagram in the morning. Go to Facebook. It's going to be unbelievable. All right, you good? Yeah. No, okay, you're not good if you're, I've got 14 people saying yeah. Are you good? 
Praise God. All right. I need you to help me preach today. Is that all right? How many of you brought your preaching shoes? Anybody? Brought your preaching voice? Come on. Give me something out there. Praise God. Here we go. Acts chapter 13 from verse 36 says, For when David had served God's purpose. Whose purpose? When David had served God's purpose. In his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his fathers and his body decayed. That's not a nice thought, is it? But his body decayed. The clinical term for decay is decompositions. Bodies begin to decompose shortly after death. The word decompose simply means to make or become rotten. That's not good. How many of you have got an area of your life that is decomposing right now? Anybody? I don't know about you. I've got some areas that the enemy is trying to get hold of. I got the, I got some areas that the enemy is trying to get onto. I got some areas that that are, that are not as glorious as I'd like them to be. They may not be rotten, but I gotta tell you, some areas in my life are not uh, exactly what I want them to be. So here we have in just one verse, one simple verse, we are given the key to avoid the rot. How many of you want to avoid the rot in life? Come on, enjoy. You got to help me out here this morning. How many of you want to avoid the rot in life? I don't know about you. I want to avoid the rot. No rot. I don't want a rotten marriage. I don't want a rotten family. I don't want rotten finances. I don't want a rotten life. I want to live the life that God promised me, which is life and life to the full. Amen. You don't want to talk about it. So here we have the key in one verse to avoid the rot and embrace the life that God promised us, which is life and life to the full. A life that goes from strength to strength. How many of you can believe for that? A life that goes from glory to glory. How many of you can believe for that? How many of you want to go from... Infinity to beyond. All right, we went from Jesus to Buzz Lightyear, but it's okay. We're going there. That's where we all want to live. Church, the truth is there are many who say that they want a full and abundant life. In fact, we would all say that, would we not? We are all saying it together. We want to live the life that Christ has promised us, which is a full and abundant life. But the truth is this, let's just put it out there, there are way fewer who will embrace a lifestyle that leads to such a life. How many of you know if you want a full and abundant life, you need to live a lifestyle that is going to lead to a full and abundant life? In this one verse, simple verse, we see the key that is going to take us here. Here we go, Acts 13, verse 36. For when David had served God's purpose... All right, can I help you out? When David had served God's purpose. 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 It's like, Shane, you're repeating yourself. I know, it's what I do. How many of you know it's what God does? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He repeats himself. Why does he repeat himself? Because sometimes we need to hear the same thing over and over and over until it gets into our spirit. It has to go from our head to our heart, that we might actually begin to live this life. For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his fathers and his body decayed. Just so you know, when it says there he fell asleep, it doesn't mean he had a snooze and they put him in the coffin and put him in the ground. How many of you know he died? They didn't kill him. Just wanted to clarify that. Otherwise, some of you are thinking, man, that's a crazy family. No, no, they weren't crazy. He fell asleep. He passed away. He served God's generation, uh, served God's purpose in his own generation. And when he slept, when he died, he was buried with his fathers and his body decayed. And, and now the reason that so many are enduring decay. And the truth is this, as I come to church and I walk through uh, the community and I look around, I, I can say this, I think, with a, a fair level of confidence. Many are enduring decay in daily life. How many of you got some areas in your life that are going moldy? Anybody? Come on, let's be real here. I know we don't like to talk about this. It's like, can't we go to the positive church where it's all positive? Hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to get there, but we need to be real along the way. And some of us sometimes have got areas that are going a bit moldy. And so if we want to avoid the mold and we want to avoid the rot, then we've got to make some decisions. Friends, you know what I've I've discovered? Many people are committed, really, really, really committed to many purposes in life. Many purposes. 
And there are many worthy purposes, no doubt about that. But friends, you know why many of us never really connect and commit to our God purpose? It is because we're so busy doing this purpose, that purpose, my mama's pur- purpose, my spouse's purpose, the family purpose, the football club purpose, the basketball purpose, and all the other purposes. When it comes to God's purpose, I'm out of energy and I'm out of time. And then, then all of a sudden I find myself at 78 years of age. Mick, you get in there quick. <clears throat> That's all right. You still look like a... I'll put it in this way, you don't look a day over 60. <laughs> He's 52. <laughs> I don't want to get to the end of my life and think, I've done this, 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 and this, but I've missed my God purpose. I don't want to get there. Does anybody else want to live a life like that? I tell you the truth, at the end of the day, you can have all the money, all the houses, all the football clubs, you can have all the victories and your kids can be uh, doing this, doing that, doing something else, but if you've missed out on your God purpose, you're going to be disappointed at the end of the day. I don't want you to be disappointed and the truth is I do not want to be disappointed. I want to live my life in such a way that, that, praise God, I'm able to do this and that and something else as well. But most of all, I want to live my life in such a way that I serve the purpose of God that God had for me in my generation and I make a difference. God wants all of us here to make a difference. Now, as I talk about uh, doing all these other purposes, I'm not necessarily talking about people outside the church. This is happening inside the church and in the kingdom of God that people are still confused about their purpose. They don't know who they are in Christ and therefore the purpose for which they're called to doesn't necessarily find the highest place of priority in their lives. But friends, I want to say to you today, that we, when we tap into our purpose, life is about to, well, it's about to get turned on, if you know what I'm saying. Friends, I, I want to ask you, if we were to do a survey here this morning, if we were to pass out uh, like we've, we're doing our care and communication forms at the moment. If we were to do a survey here today, how many of you could stand up here confidently or maybe down there confidently and, and say, I know why I'm alive. I know why I'm here. This is my God purpose in life. This is what I'm called to. This is what I'm about. So you can call me that way and you can call me that way, but I'm not going to leave my post because I know what my life is for. I know my God purpose. I wonder how many of us could do that confidently. I think there are some who would have a fair level of confidence, but if I can be really honest, I think there are many in the room today that may be getting pulled this way and that. And the only reason I say that is because when I look at the way people live their lives, it can be a little scattering, scattering. I was talking with uh, Pastor David Fuentes. You see... uh, Boom, I knew I saw your face somewhere. And what, one of the things that he said to me yesterday, we were having a conversation, this is just coming. So one of the things he said yesterday is, and one of the things he appreciates about me is that I'm consistent. Would that be right? I'm consistent. So it's always, in some ways, same, same. Same, 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 same. Same, same, same. Same, 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 same. Same. Now, for some of you, it's like, boring. I want to do it different. I want to have a wedding, three children, then get a new spouse, have some more children, adopt some compassion children, go into business, go broke, do something else before I'm 23. <laughs> you, but you know what? There's something about consistency. When you're plugged into your God purpose and you don't move from your God purpose, you become consistent. Ask any, any wife, do you want your husbands to be consistent? Ask any husband, do you want your wife to be consistent? Now, I'm not talking about lacking spontaneity because if you're around me, you know one of the things I'm very consistent with is you never know what's going to happen next, <laughs> which is bizarre that I can be so consistent in being spontaneous. But how many of you know that's what we long for? We want our family members to be consistent. We want to know that they're going to be same, 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 same. 
We want to go to a church that's not preaching this today and something else tomorrow. We, we, want to be a pe- we want to be a people who are consistent in the presence of God and we want the same person in the presence of God to be the same person Monday morning when we go to work, who's the same person in the family on Thursday night. We are looking for consistent. Now, you, you'll become consistent when you work out what your God purpose is and you just tune into that. You tune into that and I'll tell you the truth, it's going to be, all of a sudden, it's going, to, it's going to get very, very exciting. I wonder if we were to do a survey today about you and do, are you absolutely certain you've tapped into God's purpose for your life? Not, not do you have a purpose, because we all have purposes. Everybody's got a purpose. I'm not asking if you're living on purpose even, because many people are living on purpose. That, that's not the point. But how many of us could clearly articulate God's purpose for our lives. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, where there is no vision, people, what does perish mean? Go mouldy. The rot begins to set in. Friends, you don't want to be sitting in church having the rot setting in. You don't want to be in church going mouldy. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be going moldy. Uh, uh, what is that, a song, Mick, or what was it? Was it a, poet, a poem or what? The, uh, the Rolling Stone gathers no moss. Yeah, how many of you know it's like, oh, well, that's awesome. It was the 60s, man. But how many of you know it wasn't the 60s? It's actually, it's actually there's wisdom there. We're, we're meant to keep rolling. We're meant to keep moving. We've got to get a God purpose and wake up every day and say, I'm reaching for my purpose in life. I'm not just going to sit around. I'm not just going to begin to waste away. Acts 26 from verse 19 says, So then King Agrippa, I've, t- I've taught you before who King Agrippa was, haven't I? He was the inventor of superglue. <laughs> Japan, you guys didn't invent superglue. How many of you know I just made that up? He was not the inventor of superglue. But it was funny. I don't care what you say. It's a dad joke. I'm okay with dad jokes. My daughters don't like dad jokes. I say, Dad, please stop with the dad jokes. They're not cool. I'm like, I don't need to be cool. I just want to be happy. (laughs) Moving right along. So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus and then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea and to the Gentiles also. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their good deeds. So... Where, where there is no vision, people perish. They, 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 be, they begin to get mouldy and they begin to get smelly and there's a stench about them. And, and Acts, here we have Paul saying, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. How many of you have actually had a vision from heaven? How many of you know why you exist? Know why you are here on earth? Know why you rise up every morning? I tell you the truth, it's like if you want a reason to get up every day, if you want a reason to live every day, you just need to step into the presence of God and get a God purpose. And you'll be like, you'll be like, you're, you won't need an alarm clock. Your eyes are going to be every half hour, they're going to be like, is it morning time yet? Because I want to get up. I want to get out. I want to get into it. I want to be the man or woman of God that God is calling me to be. When Jesus was being interrogated by Pilate in John chapter 18, verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should be delivered to the, to the Jews. But, but now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So David, he served God's purpose. God's purpose. Do you know God's purpose? Paul was obedient to God's purpose. Are you walking in obedience to God's purpose? Jesus understood it was for God's purpose that he was born and for that purpose he had come into the world. So if you want to avoid decay, friends, I want to encourage you because I tell you the truth, this is where I see the enemy just sneaks in. He just sneaks in. And I tell you the truth, it's not just it's not just sneaking into you, but he sneaks into so many areas. Remember the, remember the chalk lady on the ads in the 70s, Mick? You would remember. And uh, it's just a Mick day today. Let's give it up for Mick because um, everybody loves St. Mick. All right. 
But remember the chalk, Louise, you're older than me, so you'd understand this one. Remember the chalk when the lady used to put the chalk into the dye and then she'd pull it out and break it and you'd see where the dye had invaded into the life of the chalk? You know what I think happens? I think when we are not living on purpose, the enemy comes along and the rot begins to set in. But it's not just into us. If I'm not living, this is what I understand, if I am not living on purpose as a man, not necessarily as a pastor, not as a, not, let's put all the titles down, just as a man, just as a woman, and a, a husband and a father. If I'm not living on purpose, you know what's going to happen? The rot is going to begin to creep in. It begins to creep in me. But you know what happens then? Because I come closely to my wife, that, that rot that is in me is now going to begin to seep into her. And then we oversee our beautiful children. We give leadership and guidance and love to our children. But the rot that is in us is now beginning to flow into our children. Friends, if you want to stop the rot in your life, you just got to make a decision. I'm going to enter the presence of God and I'm going to get a God purpose. I'm going to rise up each day and I'm going to live like there is no tomorrow. I'm going to go after everything that God has got for me. If you want to avoid the decay and the rot of life that tries to cling to all of us, get into a room and connect with heaven. Step into the presence of God and don't leave that place until you get your God purpose. You got to get a vision from the throne room of heaven. I tell you the truth, you get a vision from the throne room of heaven. It will not be dull. It will not be boring. You will not be unfulfilled. I got to tell you, well, we've been, I've been a Christian now 30 years. And I, I, I don't know when it, when it all started to really fire up, fire up. But I got to tell you, it has been unbelievable. When, when, you, when you enter into the presence of God and you start living for the purposes of God, you're going to find, you're gonna find that, that dull, boring and unfulfilled, they, they're just no longer part of your life. We do not have the time or the energy to be boring. <laughs> now this pursuit, this pursuit, it's not for the faint-hearted. So if you're a bit of a jellyfish, lacking backbone, well, maybe this isn't for you. Maybe you can just rest until Jesus comes for you. But I don't think there's any enjoyers that would fit that category. I, I think the enjoy spirit is most of you live on your toes. You're up and about. You're ready to, if you know what I'm saying. Stop it. I love it when they do that. I don't know about, I don't want to live boring. Get out of that fat old lazy boy. Throw the remote over your shoulder. Get up on your toes. Let's do this. I don't know about you, I've realised I've only got one life to live. I've only got one life and at the end of it, it's done. Oh, I want God to be able to say of me what he has said of David. When shame fulfilled my purpose in his generation, he slept. And all you good guys and girls, they threw me in a hole. And I slept with my fathers. This pursuit is not for the faint-hearted. But it is for those who would ask of the Lord. That's what I encourage you to do, ask of the Lord. Because I know there'll be many men and women in the room today that have never really asked. Maybe, maybe it's like, oh, Lord, do you have anything for me? But have you actually sought the face of God? Have you pressed into the point where, where it's like, God got so sick of you, just give him something. Now, it wouldn't be with that attitude, but have you sought him? Have you pressed into his presence where, to the point where you're just driving God crazy? Where it's like, angels, go and answer the dude. He's driving me mad. Huh. I think God's looking for that. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17, it says, I love those who love me and those who seek me, with, uh, seek me diligently will find me. N not, not who seek me annually. Well, we went to the summit, didn't we? And we asked God, God, have you got anything for us? He didn't answer me, so I'll see you next year. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, I, I made a prayer once. God is, yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you, if my intimacy with Georgie was like, hey, baby, 
and then, then I never saw her for a year. How many of you know that's not going to work? Not with Chodgy. Not that you need to know. But how many of you know that's not a relationship? That's like a drive-by. You know what I'm saying? When I go to Macca's and I say to the girl in there, hey, do you think I could have a Big Mac? And then she goes, would you like fries with that? We do not have a relationship. We're just doing business. Then we drive off. Sometimes we do that with God. Well, I went to church in June. Like, what do you want of me? You know what he wants? He wants all of you. All of you. Some, sometimes, sometimes I have people in the foyer say, Pastor Shane, are you, are you serious about that tithe thing? Do you actually think God really is asking for 10%? No, of course not. Heck no. He wants all of it. He wants all of you. He wants all of your marriage. He wants all of your family. He wants you to die to yourself and live for him that he might be glorified. He's looking for all of you. <laughs> How many of you know you're getting way more that's on the page? Well, that's why someone's going to get letters because someone will get offended, but it's all right. <clears throat> you're free. I'll be, I'll be out in the foyer. And if, if, you, if I'm not speaking the truth, you can come and tell me later. I've got no problem with it. Because you know, you know what I love about this stuff when we just start throwing stuff out? As in, I know it, I know it, it can hurt occasionally. But usually it hurts because there's truth in it. Otherwise it wouldn't hurt. It'd be like, whatever. But it's not whatever when, I, oh, I hate that. I hate that guy. Anyway, move on. Luke chapter 11 from verse 9, it says, So I say to you, I don't know if I had too much sleep or not enough sleep last night. I can't quite work it out, but we're getting there. So I say to you, what? Good. How did you know that? Oh, see. <laughs> I knew it. All right, help a brother out. So I say to you, what? And it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who... No, no, no. Okay. Everyone who... Okay. Help, help me out. Is it plural or singular? All right. In the first part of the verse, is it plural or singular? So God says ask, but what he's really saying is ask. You know what I'm saying? Because it says there, so I say to you, ask, but then in verse 10 it says for... Uh, every one of you who asks. All right. The one who... <laughs> Sorry, you can say it. The one who what? Seeks. How many of you know I'm not a seek, but I will seek? So, some, of you are, some of you know exactly what I'm saying. Others are like, what did he say? I'm not a seek, but I must what? Six. Six. Asks. Six. All right. And to the one who knocks. <laughs> All right. We're getting the whole plural thing happening as a flow now. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. Not the one who knocked and walked away, but the one who knocks. The one who seeks, the one who asks. So what's God saying? He's saying, He's saying, don't just ask once and walk away. Don't just knock once and walk away. Don't seek me once and then walk away. But ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Knock and keep knocking. Just come in my presence and get hungry before me. You know, when George and I really began to press into the Lord about what God had for us, the truth is, as the worship team come, the truth is, we were already in full-time ministry. And it's like, well, shouldn't have you pressed in before you went into full-time ministry? Wouldn't have that been a good idea? Well, we did, and then, but as we were journeying along, it just seemed to be that, that there was a shift in what we thought was going to happen. Then we found ourselves in a place. We knew where God was leading us, so we continued to prepare ourselves. But then it was like, here I am, I'm in full-time ministry, but I know that there is a specific, specific plan and purpose for my life. George and I, we knew it together. 
Now, some of you know the story. So what did we do? I went on a 40-day fast in January, February, 1998. 40 days. It's a long time. It represents 120 meals. And if you didn't know that, it's because you've never been on a 40-day fast. At day 29, Georgie came home and I was embarrassed because I had her cookbook open and I was licking the pages. It was funny. I saw her come in. I thought, where's her cookbook? Uh, uh, uh. She walks in. That's disgusting. She goes, have something to eat. I said, get behind me, Satan. (laughs) Then when I got off the ground, I'm like, (laughs) anyway. (laughs) Lost 20 kilos. 40 days. I get up in the morning and I'm like, speak now for your servant is listening. If only I had that song, I could have sung it to him. Speak. I'm ready. I get, get up in the morning. So that's what happens when I sing Babies Cry. I get up in the morning and I'm ready for God to speak. And you know what God said to me? Nothing. Not even good morning. He said nothing. I was ticked. All day I was ticked. But whatever. I'm like, well, thanks. Now I'm just skinny shame. Well, it was for a while. And then eight months later, August 1998, I'm sitting in a room, minding my own business, which is a miracle. <laughs> Presence of God had to be there. If I'm minding my own business, a miracle going on. And God turned up. I thought I was having a nervous breakdown. I start to laugh, I start to cry. I start to laugh, I start to cry. I start to laugh. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? Why am I feeling this way? put my hands and my head in my hands I see a vision of a blonde woman that I reckon most of you young blokes have had but that's another vision altogether that's a different vision <laughs> I saw a vision of a blonde woman and three little kids you get, it was obvious you could see the distress in the faces of this family the arm of God went all the way around them and God said to me as clear as clear Shane go and father your family your church your community and your state so I, I, I walked out of that place it was about 11 o'clock 10.30, 11, probably quarter to 11, something like that. On the Thursday morning, I was meant to be at this camp until the end of Friday night. I walked out. I said to the leaders, I'm going home now. I was in uh, Sydney. They said, you, you can't be going home now. I said, I am going home now. They said, it doesn't finish until tomorrow night. I said, I heard from the Lord. I heard what I come here to, came here to hear. Now I'm leaving. God bless you. Thank you. And good night. And I hopped in my car, did a burnout and left. It was like that. I was like, what? Back I went. I got home and Georgie said, what are we going to do? I said, nothing. God's going to do something. Ten days later, I got a a phone call from our state superintendent, which I'm now that guy. But anyway, so I got a phone call from Pastor Phil Hills. He says, Shane, we've got a a broken church. When he said broken church, I remembered the family that I saw in the vision. And he said, we've got a broken church that we think you and Georgie would be great for. I said, okay. We stepped out. Six weeks later, we came here. Forty-something people. I think Louise would have been there on the first day. How many of you were there on the very first day? Give me a wave if you were there on the very first day. Louise. Ash. That's it. There's about 20 of us still from that very first day that are still part of the church. We went there. So God, what did God say to me? God said, go and father your family, your church, your community in the state. So what did I do? I went to a broken church of 40-something people that, that met in a, in a little community centre that instead of having a green garden, had a garden of syringes. It didn't, it didn't look like going father the state. But you know what? I knew what God had called me to. In an instant, I knew what God had called me to. So I just started living faithfully day by day, day by day, day by day, knowing the purpose of God. Huh. One broken little church. And the truth is no one, no other pastor in Victoria wanted to touch it. So they called us out of nowhere. Now we have 10 locations across Victoria. Now we father the, the Covenant Keepers Men's Conference, which is for all of our churches. Georgie runs the door. And I'm a state president, which oversees 274 churches in the great state of Victoria. Now, let's give God praise for that, because that's God. That's God. 
Why do I say all that? Because God spoke. And if you looked at it in the natural, it's like, this is not what God spoke. But how many of you know that God calls the end from the beginning? And God calls things that are not as though they are. And God calls the most unlikely. God calls the people that are not qualified. God calls whom He calls and He gives them a purpose to live for. And when they begin to live for His purpose, His purpose, His purpose, no longer is life dull, no longer is life boring, no longer will you live unfulfilled, but you're gonna live everything. You're gonna live in that place, in that space, where it's like, it is off the hook. Uh, it's off the hook. So now, now what God began 20 years ago is flowing throughout Victoria. But how many of you know the borders of Victoria and, and it's like God has just lifted them. I remember at three years ago, I was in Lou, I came back from the States and I said, I really believe that even though we were call, initially called to Victoria, it's like God has just lifted the borders. And we need to begin to dream and allow God to speak to us for beyond the borders. At that point in time, we probably only had five locations in Victoria. Now we have 10. But how many of you know now we're in Hobart? Praise God. We're in Hobart. How many of you know now we're in Osaka? How many of you know tomorrow morning, you're going to find out what nation we're going to next? And I know they're watching online, so let's give it up for them right now as well. Huh. All because of purpose. I'm going to close. Here's three things you need to know about purpose. How many of you want to live on for God's purpose? I'm going to ask it again, this time slower, because I know you're focusing on other stuff. How many of you want to live on purpose? God's purpose. All right, all right, we're here. All right, think about these thoughts. Here we go. Point number one, it must be bigger than your understanding. If, if, you, if you hear the voice of God and He says, this is your purpose in life, you need to make fish and chips every Friday night. That's not God. It's not God. You say, but I like fish and chips. My point exactly. It's your appetite talking to you. It's nearly lunchtime. So put that down. It's got to be bigger than your understanding. When God said, Father, the state of Victoria, I'm like, Lord, I, I'm a little assistant pastor in a very small church in the country and nobody knows me. I didn't grow up in the right circles, not in the right family. I was, it's like, how could I ever do this? Friends, understand this. When God connects you to your purpose, it will be bigger than your understanding. Point number two, it must strengthen the family, which is the church. Can I say this to you? If, if you have a God purpose and it doesn't strengthen the church that you're a part of, personally, I would question as to whether it's really God. You say, Shane, how can you say that? Think about it. The analogy that's in Scripture is that we are the body of Christ. Do you have any part of your body that is committed to strengthening other bodies that is not bringing life and strength to your own body. Hello? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it can't be out and it can't be beyond and it can't be grander and it can't be bigger. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it, it shouldn't be a, a gift or a purpose that is all about what's happening beyond your body where God has planted you. Point number three. Thank you, Jake. Point number three, it must advance the kingdom of God. And you're like, well, if, it, if it's strengthening our body, isn't that advancing the kingdom of God? Well, yes and no. So Georgie preached this service, uh, this message in the first service. And the, so our, our, our moment of clarity, what she was asking for clarity about, was in regards to, well, what is the difference between strengthening the church and strengthening the kingdom of God? And so I said, baby, I said, point number two is it must strengthen the family, the church. Point number three is it must advance the kingdom of God. How many of you know Jesus said, I will build my church. He's going to bring strength to his church. But when he was teaching the disciples how to pray, he said, pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Oh, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. How many of you know, if we're just gonna to come to the church and strengthen each other and do nothing when we exit the building, 
and go into our hurting communities and hurting towns and hurting cities and states and nations, if we're, if we're not going to advance the Kingdom of God out there, then at the end of the day, we've missed the point. So it's going to be bigger than you can get your head around. It's going to build the church and it's going to advance the Kingdom. And when we work this out, God's got a purpose for me that's going to do all those things. Well, look out, devil, you're about to have a nervous breakdown. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I like the way it says it in the Amplified. Now to him who by the power that is at work within us is able to carry out His purpose and do so super abundantly, far, far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts or dreams. How many of you know God wants to take each and every one of you there? I want to encourage you today, God wants to take each and every one of you there. This is not a verse for pastors. This is not a verse for leaders. This is for a this is this verse is for all the children of God, the sons and daughters of His great kingdom, which you are well and truly a part of. Why don't we stand to our feet? I want to pray this morning for every brother, every sister that's saying, Shane, I want to connect with my life's purpose. Why am I alive? Jesus was able to say it so clearly. For this reason I was born. For this reason I've come into the world. Are you able to say in the presence of God and other hearers? I know why I'm alive. I know why I was born. I know why I do what I do. Or are you just sort of just trying to work it out? If you're serious about knocking on heaven's door, seeking God's face, asking His will, that you would know the purpose for which you've been born. Can I get you to raise both hands towards heaven? I just want to pray for you right now. If this is you, are saying, Shane, I want to know. I want to know, I want to know. I've been playing around this thing for far too long. I've been in church for too many years. My life isn't progressing. I'm not moving in the right direction. I want to live on purpose. I want to live in the power of God. I want to live in the wonder of heaven. I want to live in the thrill of the moment of walking on the water and fulfilling everything that God has called me to. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now, from the front to the back, from my right to the left, and for all those that are watching online. Lord, I declare in Jesus' Name, Lord, they will live on purpose. Lord, I pray as they come into Your presence, as they enter the lounge room of heaven, I pray, Almighty God, that You would speak to them clearly, clearly, clearly. Speak to them, Father, that they might know that they know that they know why they were born, what their purpose is, and how they are going to advance the Kingdom of God. Lord, I ask and I pray in Jesus' Name that You would not speak quietly, but You would declare, Lord, declare, declare, write it on their hearts that they would know that they know that they know the purpose for which they have been called. I thank You for my brothers and I thank You for my sisters. Let them live boldly and let them live courageously, I pray. Let them lay hold of all that is theirs in Jesus' Name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Come on, let's give up to the Lord because the Lord is good and the Lord has got so much for you. Praise God. I'm going to ask that Unless you need to be moving right now, I'm just going to ask that you don't move for one minute. Because I don't know who's in the room, but I do know this. The Lord is here. And whenever we get to this time of the service, the Lord is wanting to call people to Himself. So if you need to move, move. But if you don't need to move, I'm just asking, just, just give me two minutes. We can talk about purpose. But unless we have a relationship with Christ, we'll never know what that purpose is. It's only Jesus who can reveal the real purpose of our lives. Sometimes we, I'm sure we just think life is just life. Okay, sarah, sarah, some people say. People who generally say, okay, sarah, sarah, just flip flop around like a frog in a sock and never fulfill the purposes that God has got for their life. We need to be a people who live on purpose, live on mission. The only way we can live on purpose and on mission is by coming into relationship with Christ. We need Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask for every head to be bowed, every eye to be closed. The Bible says that 
all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know, you don't need me to tell you that we have all sinned. We all know we've all sinned. The Bible says that the wages for that sin is death. But the free gift of God is the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what I love? I love the fact that God is not a respecter of men. He doesn't look at the colour of our skin or what school we went to or how much money we have in our bank accounts. He's all the time. He's only interested in you. He's only interested in hearts. So from the front to the back, from the right to the left, today I want to extend to you an invitation to simply say yes to Jesus. Not yes to this church, not yes to what we're doing around the world or whatever the case may be. I just want to extend to you a, an opportunity to say yes to Christ. Yes to Christ. If you don't know Jesus, if you haven't been walking with Jesus, can I encourage you today? Ask Him right here, right now. Ask Him to forgive you of your sin and make Him the Lord of your life. Make Him the Lord of your life. Make Him your God. Make Him your friend. Ask Him this day to forgive you, to take away the shame and the guilt and to fill you with joy and with peace, contentment like you've never known before. I don't know what happens when a man or a woman is born again. All I know is everything changes. And I promise you, my friend, if you're in this room today and you need salvation, you need to know that you're a child of God. You want to know that you're a child of God and belong to the family of God before you leave this place. You can. And God's peace and God's joy will seal it in your heart and you will know that you know, I am a child of God. So from the front to the back, from the right to the left, all over this room, if you're here and you're saying, Shane, today's the day. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give my life to Christ. If that is you on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. When you lift it up, don't just lift it up a little bit, but lift it all the way up. When I see it go all the way up, I'm going to point at you and say, God bless you. The moment I say, God bless you, the Spirit of the living God is going to come upon you. New life is about to begin. It really is this easy to step from the old life into the new life. It's just a response of faith to Jesus that says, Jesus, I want you to come into my life and He will, He will. So from the front to the back, from the right to the left, all over this room, if you're here today and you're saying, Shane, I'm sick of going around and around the mountain, I want to begin to live a life on purpose as a child of God. I want to know that I'm a child of God. I'm forgiven and I'm made right with the Saviour before I leave this place. On the count of three, won't you raise your hand now? Are you ready, my friends? On the count of three, here we go. Lift up that hand if you want to give your life to Christ. First time or second time makes no difference. You're just saying, Shane, I know I need to come into a relationship with Jesus today or back into a relationship with Jesus today. On the count of three, will not you raise that hand now? Here we go. One, two, three, right now. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sister. God bless you, my friend. God bless you, champion. God bless you. God bless you over here, man. Who else today? God bless you, man. Good job. Converse, praise God. Who else today is saying, Shane? I want, I want this, I want this. Anybody else? Anybody else? Up here, good, good man. <laughs> And your bubba as well, I like that, that's awesome. Anybody else? Just look at me if you're saying, yeah, don't miss me. Don't miss me. All right, that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna pray together. We're all gonna pray together. If you raise your hand, just believe this. As you pray this prayer with a heart of faith, the Spirit of God is gonna do a wonder in your life, the greatest miracle of all. People ask us sometimes, do you see miracles and enjoy church? I say, every Sunday. Every Sunday and the greatest miracle of all is when someone says, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Biggest miracle. Come alive for eternity in the presence of God. Let's all pray together. Dear Jesus, I thank you today for bringing me to this place that I might give my life to you. Today, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Help me, Lord, to live a life that is pleasing and honouring of you Today, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my all. And I ask you, be my Lord, be my Saviour, be my God, be my friend. This day, Lord, I do give you my life. And I believe that you will be all of that. And I'll be your child. And I'll never be alone again. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. And Amen. And Amen. Praise God. Come on, begin. So, so if you raise your hand, hopefully someone from our New Life team has seen you. They're going to give you a Bible and some other things. So Mick will talk about that. If no one comes to you, please come to us out there in the guest lounge. But all to all the men, Mick's going to do this as well. But to all the men that are in the room, can I encourage you, this Thursday night, 
All right, beginning at 6, we have dinner. 7.30, we're kicking off. So, but I want to, can I encourage you, if you're a man, you're planning to enjoy church, come out. This is going to be our only meeting until August, yeah. as far as, right. yeah. as far as everyone coming together. Yeah. There's other stuff going on and you want to be a part of it. I promise you, you'll want to be a part of it. It's going to be a great night. Come on. The man's going to bring the word. You've got to get here. Bring your brothers, bring your dads, bring all the guys in your world. Seriously, it's going to be a great night. We are going to fill you, men, until you fall over. Okay? We've got so much food for you. Also, let me just remind you about the Relationship and Marriage Seminar next Saturday morning. Uh, I want to encourage you to go online and register for this event. You've got to get there, whether you're married, single, whatever. I want to encourage you to invest in yourself by coming into this relationship seminar. Uh, This week, we've got friendship groups. If you're not part of a friendship group, go out to ABC Central, connect with one of our incredible team, and they will help you into a friendship group. Next Sunday, we have Pastor Roger Archer preaching here in the West Campus. Can Can I wait to hear this man? I love this man. I love his heart. Yes, it's been so great just to be able to have you in our service. Hey, why don't you come and meet us in the guest lounge for a hot coffee, uh, whatever whatever suits you, but we want to meet you. We want to get to know you. So come through the curtain or come through the doors and meet us in the guest lounge. Uh, Just want to say thank you for everyone, just just for coming today. Uh, I want to encourage you, go out, uh, buy someone a coffee, get to know someone you don't know, but have an incredible week. God bless your church. Take care.